This video is going to be a quick review and overview of cell structures and functions. We're going to start off with the cell theory and its three components. The first being that all organisms are made up of one or more cells. That means that some organisms may only be one cell, not as complex as they're going to be, whereas you can get organisms that contain thousands or millions or billions of cells. The cell is the basic unit of all living things. Even though it's made up of smaller components, those components on their own cannot meet the seven characteristics of life. Therefore, the cell is the smallest thing that can be considered alive. And all cells come from pre-existing cells. They can't just appear out of nowhere and they can't just have parts combined to create a cell. Each cell has come from a cell that has existed in the past as a part of another organism. So no matter what type of cell we're looking at, there are some common structures, whether it's plant, animal, bacteria, and these components consist of a cell membrane. There has to be some sort of a structure encapsulating the cell to keep it all together. Otherwise, it would just kind of be a blob of jello. So the cell membrane identifies the edges or the boundaries of the cell. There's also some sort of genetic material. Now, sometimes it's in a nucleus, sometimes it's not, but the genetic material is what contains the instructions for that cell to do whatever it is that it needs to do to stay alive. And lastly, there is cytoplasm, no matter what type of cell, because without the cytoplasm, the cell would collapse upon itself, and cytoplasm allows for movement of materials of molecules within the cell to allow it to sustain life. Now, when we're looking at types of cells, we can break it down into two major classifications. The first being called prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotes consist of only bacteria and cyanobacteria. So if we notice, they are single cell, they're very simple, there's not a lot in them. That's what a prokaryotic cell is. It can only ever be one cell, only ever one cell large, and it doesn't have any of the membrane-bound organelles, meaning that it doesn't have a true nucleus. So its genetic material is just floating around inside the cell. It doesn't have that protective area of a nucleus. It also doesn't have any of those other organelles that have membranes, such as mitochondria, chloroplast, Golgi bodies, ER, anything like that. The type of cells that do have those membrane-bound organelles and a true nucleus are known as eukaryotic cells. We often think of the most two common examples as animal and plant. Recognizing that our animal cells are generally more rounded in shape and our plant generally have a more rigid structure due to their cell walls. So let's take a look at typical cell diagrams. Now this would be an animal cell because it's rounded. We're going to take a look at the components and then list their structures and their functions. So let's start with the nucleus area. So we have the nucleus, the nuclear envelope which surrounds the boundary of the nucleus, the nucleolus, the dense part in the middle of the nucleus, the chromatin or the genetic material, and nuclear pore holes so things can get in and out of the nucleus. So in terms of the function, it controls the cell's activities and it contains all of the genetic information in the form of DNA. Found in all cells except for prokaryotes because their genetic material is just floating around. The nucleoplasm is essentially the cytoplasm that is inside the nucleus, and the nucleolus is this very dense region in the middle. It is dissolved nucleotides and enzymes, and the function of this nucleolus is to make ribosomes, found in all cells, both plants, animals, except for prokaryotes because they don't have a nucleus. Next organelle we're going to take a look at are ribosomes. Now, ribosomes can be found attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, or they can be located down here, they can be free floating around in the cytoplasm. The function is to make proteins. So again, under structure, they can be free bodies or attached to the ER. They are made up of rRNA or ribosomal RNA and proteins. Their job is to make proteins and they are found in all types of cells. Next up is the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, rough because it has embedded ribosomes. So the endoplasmic reticulum is a network of tubes or membranes, smooth not having any ribosomes on it, and their job is to connect the nucleus and membranes and transport things around inside the cell. They're also responsible for the location of protein synthesis. It's the ribosomes themselves that make the proteins, but since they can be embedded in the ER, they make the proteins, dump them into the ER, they are then packaged and can be transferred throughout the cell. All cells except prokaryotes 
have endoplasmic reticulum. The plasma membrane, sometimes called the phospholipid bilayer, sometimes called the cell membrane, plasma implies that it is moving, that it's not rigid. In a plant, it is inside of the cell wall. In an animal, it is the outermost layer. It is a double layer of phospholipids. So a phospholipid being each of these heads and tails. Notice there's a layer on the top and a layer on the bottom. The two layers together create one cell membrane. It is selectively permeable, meaning some things can get through, some things can not. Its job is to protect. It controls movement of materials in and out and helps that cell maintain homeostasis or a stable environment. All cells have a cell membrane. Next up is the cytoplasm. It is clear jelly-like substance, relatively thick, that contains organelles and cytoskeleton fibers. This job is to support the cell so it doesn't collapse on itself and protect the organelles as different molecules move around. All cells have cytoplasm. Golgi bodies can be differentiated from the ER because they are farther away from the nucleus. They are stacks of flattened membrane sacs. Their job is to package and transport things out of the cell. They also modify proteins and it can also be the location of lipid or fat production. All cells except prokaryotes have Golgi bodies. The mitochondria or mitochondrion. Notice smooth around the outside with a folded inner layer. It is a double membrane organelle. So if some say peanut shaped, smooth outer, folded inner layer, those folds are called cristae. Uniquely, it has its own DNA. Its job is to release the energy stored in glucose, and it is the site of aerobic respiration, meaning using oxygen to break down that glucose to create energy. It is the energy powerhouse of cells. All cells except prokaryotes. Yes, plants have mitochondria too. Next up is the lysosome. The lysosome is a membrane-bound vesicle. A vesicle is just cell membrane forming a bubble, okay? A membrane-bound vesicle, but it has digestive enzymes so it can break things down so they can be reused by the cell or when things like viruses or bacteria get in that shouldn't be there, the lysosomes will break them down. So a vesicle is a used to transport materials out of the cell or transport and stores material inside the cell. Just a little bubble of a cell membrane. Vacuoles are storage containers. In plants, they usually have one very large vacuole. Animal cells, if they have vacuoles, have very small vacuoles around. So fat cells would have more vacuoles because they store materials. And lastly, in our animal cell is the centriole. Now, the centriole is part of what is known as a cytoskeleton. It's a network of supporting um, materials to help move organelles and anchor organelles and help things kind of get moved around and transported inside. Quick look at the plant cell. We have a nucleus in the plant as well. Rough endoplasmic reticulum, we recognize it because it is attached to the nucleus. Smooth ER because there are no dots or ribosomes on it. Golgi apparatus, stack of membranes away from the nucleus. Plasma membrane, the inner layer going around. Mitochondria, because plant cells need energy as well. Free floating ribosomes. Now unique to the plant cells is the cell wall, the rigid layer around the outside. Chloroplasts are also unique to plants because they can't eat. They need to take sunlight and turn it into food. So chloroplasts make food for plant cells and vacuoles, the large central vacuole, because they don't know when it's going to rain or when they're going to have access to sunlight to be able to make food again. So they store water and food and nutrients in there because they don't have the ability to move around like animal cells. So let's revisit. Cell wall, outermost layer, rigid, made up of cellulose, indigestible to humans, fiber, perforated, many pores so things get in and out. Its job is to support and protect. So looking at that chloroplast, contains chlorophyll, which is the molecule that allows it to take the energy from the sun and make glucose via photosynthesis, filled with stroma, which is a gel-like fluid, and in the process of photosynthesis, oxygen is released. So when we look at all of these organelles, they work together to keep our cells alive. No organelle on their own can do it. So we have the interaction of vesicles and lysosomes for digestion. We have the uh, ER will make the proteins, which then get modified, and the Golgi, which then gets sent out of the cell. All of these organelles interact to keep cells alive.